Factors, delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre prepared, chef crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. Head to factormeals.com slash goodchildren50 and use code goodchildren50 to get 50% off. That's five zero. That's code goodchildren50 at factormeals.com slash goodchildren50 to get 50% off. You're kind of the Rachel Dole is all of Italians. Is that what, who, what do you mean? Like, I just think that some true colors are being shown today and they're Kelly Green. Is it because I'm, like, claiming being Irish today? Yeah. Do you think that this this leprechaun, this little leprechaun, looks like he just got a fresh lip filler? Yeah, it looks like you are a leprechaun that the end of the, the rainbow ended at Beauty Lab <laughs> in Salt Lake City. And that is exactly where I wanted to end. My lips don't need to fit in it. It's fine. You look amazing. Thank you so much. So do you. Thank you. I know. Because, I mean, with you with a bob... Do we need anything else? No, we don't. We don't no. need anything else. I, I, I was put on this planet to serve Bob. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think Bob's I, in hair. Bob's Duncan in furniture store. Bob Duncan. Bob, Bob good Duncan. Luck, Charlie. Good luck. I would Charlie. love to serve him. Yeah, the dad and good luck, Charlie. Bob we, Duncan. You would love to service him. Yeah, I'd serve him in any any way that Bob Duncan needed my service, I'd be available for his service. You would say, Robert, you could serve me on a platter however you would, may like. Any, I, literally, I would let Bob Duncan do unspeakable things to me. Good children! <laughs> Hello, guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where host Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarello. Sorry, I'm going Australian. Hello, guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on their 23 years of friendship growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s in all of the nostalgia, trauma, and St. Patrick's Day that there are. You sound authentic there. That <laughs> right? ending was authentic. Thank you so You're much. You're so talented. It's crazy because I feel like I've been prepping that accent for so long and well, no one's ever asked. In many ways, in many ways, it seems like maybe you were born to be a leprechaun. Well, why? Huh. I'll give you a few examples. Please. One, you're a short king. I'm not saying that as a read. No. And I know that. That 5'8 is a very average height for a man. Well, but people, this is the thing. And again, people want to say that I'm so short, but look at the leprechauns. Like, they are literally thriving. You want to talk riches? Get the fuck out of here. They got gold. And they have to have massive dicks. I don't know why I'm in this kind of mood. I'm sorry. No, and that's fine. I'm sorry. It kind of feels like the Ogre for Ogre episode. Already? It's, Already. It's at that point. Well, would you fuck a leprechaun? I mean, Yeah. But it's kind of like fucking myself, if that's what you're saying. I guess, yeah. But they... Another thing about me? I love a rainbow. The thing about leprechauns is, like... They're gay. They're faggots. Yeah, they're gay. Like, there's a lot of homosexual activity surrounding leprechauns, mm-hmm. which shockingly doesn't translate to the sort of behavior and energy I feel is represented by the average St. Patrick's Day celebrator. Well, because this is the thing. When you think about a leprechaun, you're thinking like they're the joke. They're dancing. They're the entertainment. They're like that. Ha ha. Look at me. Look at me. Right. And then everybody else is like sipping their beer is like, whoa, look at that crazy. Andrew. Yeah. You've kind of always been a leprechaun. I kind of always. You've always been a leprechaun. I didn't want to start this episode. So with crying. Sobbing. But you know what I mean? Like. You're kind of like, you're at that party. You're like, F- straight people, look at me, look at laugh me, look at, at me. me. As they drink I'm their so beer. silly, I'm so small. I'm doing an Irish, like I, I literally no am doing on. an Irish jig. Barefoot. Pointed toes. I have a pot of gold at the end of my rainbow. Oh. And then I start singing Rainbow by Kesha. Then it gets weird. I used to live in, in the dark niche. Dressed, dressed in black, black act so hard, bitch. But now. That album made us come out, and I think that that's something that's really powerful, and I know we've talked about it before, but if you have not streamed Kesha's 2018, 
I was definitely like on 2017. 2000, yeah, because I was we were going into senior year. Yeah, 2017 album Rainbow. You're missing out on something that could potentially cause you to come out. And I kind of feel like you should be in a deprivation tank <laughs> while you listen to it. Can you- My deprivation tank was a family road trip down to, um, I want to say South Florida. Yeah. Um, I listened to that album the whole time, and yep. I said. And between that and reading Call Me By Your Name no. on the same trip. What were you expecting? It was I was at my limit. Yeah. Two weeks later, I said, guess what, you guys? Mm-hmm. I have exciting news. My I'm deprivation tank was the um, group chat. The subway. The subway and the way the New York uh, Stock Exchange, I would close my eyes and listen to Rainbow. Nothing says deprivation tank more than the New York Being, City subway system. Being surrounded by <laughs> Constant. the most amount of people in ca- chaos. Yeah. yeah, that's my type of deprivation. So, what are we talking about today? Today... Honestly, we're just talking about luck, luck of the Irish, Irish people in general. Out of the gate, we're talking about <laughs> luck. <laughs> <laughs> what it means to celebrate holidays like these um, and stunning actresses that come along with it. Wow. Um. So I have a question for you. Yeah, please. Shoot. Have you celebrated St. Patrick's Day before? My whole entire life. See, I never have. Joe, my whole entire life, my mother was making Irish soda breads in the house. Yeah, you were. Yeah, she was. She was whipping those out. I was enjoying. Sweet and savory. Yes. Yes. She'd replace salt with sugar and say. A little Irish soda bread goes a very, very long way. It, the longest of ways, because I'll tell you one thing with them. Sometimes they put the fennel seed. Have you had the fennel seed? Yes, of course can be too overwhelming yeah, I for, do the, agree. The, for the average I time. I have to agree. But when you slather that bad boy with butter, oh, I'm clenching just thinking about it. You've been clenching nonstop for months On now. the way here, on the way here, I just couldn't even stop. What do you mean? Joe, it was like painful. I don't even know what's going on. The beard looks very natural on you. Because my, I think that my hair is, is turning, turning red. orange. Turning, turning red. red. Okay, so no, to bring it back to my question. Yes, I celebrate. So you sell it, but I my I guess my next question is like, what are you, you celebrating? No, 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 no. Sure, he drove those snakes out, right? St. Patrick. It's a very big deal. Kind yeah. of, kind of incredible of him. I'm really proud of his work. He's kind of a warrior when you really think about it. The thing is, the Kesha Saint, of his time. St. Patrick's Day is the Santa Con of holidays. Yes, it is like. How can we bring out the worst in the worst people? Because it's, you know what? It's saying, how many beers can you drink in a day? How many green beers can you throw back? How many shamrock headbands can you put on? Mm -hmm. How many glittery little pot of gold rainbow face stickers can you you apply to your cheek? Tell you one thing. The corned beef farms are going Nuts. Now, I have to investigate what you just said, because what does that exactly mean? Are there farms where they're raising corned beef? Is that the implication? So what I think that they're doing is courting the beef. Okay, yeah. So I don't have believe... Have corned beef? No, but I think I would love to I think corn. that that's next for you. Because, like, what does that even mean? It just means, like, a lot of, like, peppercorns? I think pepper peppercorns, yeah. Yeah. And, like, a brine. In like a, but that's not beef that's beef that's beef baby mama that's beef what it, do you mean it just feels like more like pork that's corned beef it's because it's been slow it's been corned for so long Oof. that that like pull apart texture only can come from that i believe with a little bit of mustard with a little, bit of mustard. With a a little, little rye bread I don't, yeah, i'll tell you one thing i don't like about the irish the cabbage Who's adding the You're cabbage? making a huge mistake because when I was on the Atkins diet at seven years old, I loved the cabbage soup. Of course you loved the cabbage soup on the Atkins <laughs> diet. Because that's what you were living for was the cabbage. I love cabbage soup, though. For some reason, it just kind of hits for me. Have you ever had a cabbage soup? What does it taste like? Like cabbage. Well, I mean, me coming to you right now and saying, I don't think I like cabbage. But I wonder if, you've ha- if you had cabbage in its soupiest form... If perhaps you're... Sell me on it. 
tell me on it right now what why would i want to eat cabbage soup i don't really know how to describe it in a positive light it's not necessarily the most attractive dish okay it's like it's like you left cabbage in the sink for a couple of days you okay. know like it's like it's at the bottom of the sink water but it's but, very flavorful okay and it does wonders to your stomach well now you sold me because it's, it's basically like you're kind of you know cabbage is great for your stomach and as two oh. bitches with stomach issues, we should be eating more cabbage. That's why, like, kimchi is amazing for your stomach because it's double. You're getting cabbage, and then they're fermenting that cabbage. And we all know fermented goods in your stomach, great for your gut. So what you're telling me is my stomach's been the way it is because, because I've been having – I'm lacking cabbage. And you these doctors are cab- out here telling me I'm lacking vitamin D when they could be telling me I'm you're just lacking, lacking, cab- lacking cabbage all these years. Yeah. You got to get into the cabbage industry. You got to get deep into cabbage. I'm a cabbage patch. Did you ever have a cabbage patch doll? I've had a, a few cabbage patch dolls. Really? I think when I was like a kid kid. They might well, have been I'm passed down. Surprised. I feel like they were probably passed down. Did like you have songs. a cabbie? I do think I had a cabbage patch doll. There was something really creepy about them. Yeah. They were almost too thick. Well, a lot of people might have to say that about themselves in this room. Can I take the, the the thing off? I'm so I'm sh- Andrew. No, I am not in charge of you. You are your own person. This is a fifty fifty partnership. We're on air. You can take off the beard. The beard was just throwing me for some loops. That it like, was. I will say though, it looked perfect on. Like I'm really excited by it. Don't say that because like if we want all the social cuts to have the beard, I'll take one for the team for an hour. No, because I feel like your vibe will be better without the beard. And that's I completely more agree, and that's okay. what I'm thinking. Okay. So, Cabbage Patch Dolls. <laughs> I, you, did they have, like, genitalia? I don't think that they necessarily, I think they had, fl- like, a flatness to did them. they have an ass? They had little butts? They had little baby butts, Joe. Do so, like, just, I, don't, I don't want to be talking necessarily yeah, about ass. About but no, ass but I just the remember cabbage. there being, like, a weirdly, like, um biological element to a cabbage patch doll like there was like something about them that was like it weirdly reminded you like oh human beings are gross so do you know what i'm talking about i don't know what you're talking about with this one but there might maybe if you were looking under the pants (laughs) (laughs) were you not looking under the pants of every toy you ever had yeah most of them not not a cabbage patch doll no no, but there was some. I think it was because you were like motherly. You were you were being a mother. <laughs> I was being a mother. So I you were kind of like cha- diaper time. No, I don't think that was it. I think that the Cabbage Patch doll experience. There's a store, and they would like give oh. birth to the dolls, and like they would like you could like watch them give birth. Like there was something fucking weird happening at the Cabbage Patch doll industry. It's like I'll sixth grade something. science class. They're watching birth. I did some research on the creator of Cabbage Patch Dolls one time. Arrested? It's a biopic waiting to happen. Oh. In fact, it may be a biopic being made. That might be why I did the research. Someone's making a Cabbage Patch biopic. I was about to say, did you get a deal that I don't know about? You're about to, you're about to and release. I go, and you know who wrote it? <laughs> <laughs> I do love a biopic. I do love a biopic about somebody who's made something. You know that about me. You do actually. You know that about me. I have a few in, in my repertoire. Give me, have... give me two. Name two right now, quickly. Well, Nancy Green, as you know. You know Nancy Green. I know Nancy Green, the 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 woman from which the Aunt Jemima character was created. Correct. What biopic are you talking about? I want to make one about her. Oh, I thought you said you love a biopic. Oh, I thought you were saying. Oh, I was saying the ones that I want to create. Oh, I want to help, help, help push along. I know that you've been talking about the Nancy Green biopic for years. Yes, now. correct. Can you share Nancy Green's story as as okay. briefly as you possibly can because it is a St. Patrick's Day episode, but her story deserves to be shared. Okay, so Nancy Green grew up in the 1800s and she was a slave, but people knew her because. She, you know, tended to the home and would make incredible meals, incredible pancakes, things like that. When it was time for Quaker Oaks to get started, they reached out to Nancy and were like, we want you to be the face of How, There's Jemima. some weird shady thing, right? That that's the reason that happened in the first place? Well, because well, the first person her? who was Aunt Jemima was a white man in blackface. So they switched from that. To Nancy Green. Okay. Nancy Green was like, Aunt Jemima is still in business. That makes me ill. It's crazy. I think it's worse. I'm sorry. I, like I know. To speak. But Nancy, 
she saw this as an opportunity to be like, oh my God, I'm going to be the face of this brand. But the real thing is the people behind the camera were trying to make a joke out of her. So they would take pictures of her. They would put her slogans on there and it would be exactly verbatim how she would say it. So they were putting that on all of their boxes, their posters or everything and saying like, if she's making them, you're going to want this product. But little did they know that nothing Nancy Green, changed. little did changed. they, nothing's changed. It's crazy. Little did they know that Nancy Green, well, Green, St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's Day. She loved. Little did they know that Nancy Green was an activist of her own for single mothers because she was a single mother. You're kidding. Single black mothers. Yes. Correct. She was doing all of this, this activism, all of this work. And you know what? I think that her legacy precedes her. And she will be going down in history as somebody who has not been mentioned very often because when the Aunt Jemima scandal and everything happened, no one was bringing up Nancy Green. She and was the wasn't first woman. It that, like they like she never got any money for it, and she like, never got her any family money. was like, "You literally base this on our mother's likeness." Yes, and they like didn't do anything. But remember, she got hit by a car. She got hit by a car. She got hit by a car. It is literally like I remember you telling me this story and being the most devastated I've ever been. She, this she, woman has inspired millions has probably made white men billions, billions. of dollars billions. mocking her likeness mm -hmm. and now celebrating her likeness yes. celebrating in quotation marks and how she know. had to die was that and way she got hit by a car and wasn't it like after a meeting or something it was like it was an like, activist meeting it was yeah happy happening yeah she's she she was a very happy person at least from what i read i want to know more of her story and i, I want somebody didn't I you mean, read the book i did read the book what is it called? Slave in a Box. Slave in a Box. It was actually really good. But I'm not the person to make that movie. So if anybody is willing to make that movie, I'd You're be willing to collaborate and like chat. What will you do? I what just want to just really like, see it happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Produce. I'll produce. Yeah. Yeah, Put for money sure. money behind it. Um, so pivoting away from Nancy Green, biopics in general. Um, one of my favorite biopics, Luck of the Irish. Luck of the Irish. was a biopic. I actually, I'm unfortunately, I regret to say, I really wanted to watch Luck of the Irish this I week agree. because I haven't seen it probably since I was five years old. I don't really remember what happens. I just remember having a crush on that main boy. And he played basketball. And he, and played he basketball. dribbled. He, he could dribble. Why are you saying that? I know. I mean, like, I just felt like it was fair game. And I think it's really inappropriate that I would even mention that. He was, like, in high school. Yeah. I take it back. I really do. But like at um, the time, it was just, the plot it like it was like um. I okay. I'm pretty sure the plot of that movie was that boy. His family had a curse put on them by a leprechaun. Yes, and the leprechaun like came back and was like that you're toast unless you play us in a basketball game. It kind of was. It did it kind of give Space Jam. It was very Space Jam, but with leprechauns. Yeah, and I remember him like having like a little leprechaun ear. I thought that was really cute. Did he get, he starts becoming a leprechaun? Right? Yeah, he, he starts tiny. becoming a leprechaun. I think it was what they was loved doing that. Disney loved at that time like shrinking, shrinking, growing tails, ears. Like yep. they were. It was all like anamorphs was all the rage. Yes, we were shifting bodies at that point. They did love. It was very like. I don't know. It was a fun, a fun way to use the screen. Did you ever get very drunk on a on a St. Patrick's Day? I would say in high in college. What were you doing? You think? Oh, we uh, same. Well, I mean, at Loyola, they had um, power plant would have a St. Patrick's Day event. Did you do anything crazy? Did I? I my my form of crazy though in college because I wasn't kissing. <laughs> I wasn't fucking. I, I was just like, kissing. I wasn't kissing. So like I was just getting very, very drunk and probably either having to leave early, crying or dancing a little you bit. You were crying pretty often? I was crying all the time in college. So you were gay? Well, that was definitely one of the main reasons. What were the other reasons? I wasn't happy with how I looked. I was lonely. I was, oh, I was feeling, oh my God, I'm about to graduate. Or I'm a finance major. That's what am I doing with my life? Cry. It was very common thing. So for it's St. Patrick's Day. Everyone's vibing and you're saying I'm unhappy with how I look, with my life, with my major, with my sexuality. Yes. I'm not even kissing. No. But I will wear a shirt that says kiss me, I'm Irish. Well, you are. And I am. 
And for the listeners at home that are shocked to hear that, I am also Irish. So Rachel do, Dole is all. Do with that what you will. I I definitely milk I feel like people who are like 10% Irish will milk this holiday that they are Irish right. every year. Are you 10% though? 25. That's a lot bigger than 10. Yeah. 25. You're that's a whole grandparent that you're erasing. I have a whole great grandparent. That's why my middle name is Martin. Wow. Martin. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? But my middle name is Martin. It's very Irish. Is it? Yeah, Martin. Marty. Oh, Marty. You're kind of, you kind of give Marty boots. I was thinking that if I rebranded. You would go by Marty? I can go by Marty. Well, that's when I was going to re- rebrand as Drew, Drew Martin. Paul. Drew Paul. Drew Paul would be if I was a like a... I guess a RuPaul impersonator. You okay. Can't, you can't do anything with that. Drew Martin for me could be a talk show host that wouldn't have this personality. It'd be very different. What would his personality be? I think he would be a lot more professional and he'd be like, how are you doing, Saoirse? It's very nice to have you on today. It's funny you bring up Saoirse Ronan because she's Irish. Yeah, she is Irish. And I am looking like right her. at her. Yeah, I don't know. I just like, you know, like when you don't have any Irish in you, there was a joke there that I, I couldn't come up with in the moment. But you'd like a little? Would you? What did I say? What did you say? <laughs> what happened? That was a glitch in the Matrix. That was a glitch. I said when you don't have any Irish in you, but you'd like a little. As in like a penis. Like an oh, Irish I get that. But anyway, when you don't have any Irish in you. Are you even lucky? Well, Yes, but also it's hard to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. It's not my culture, not my costume. So I chose to celebrate the thing that I felt closest to when it comes to Irish pride, which is Seer Sharonin as Lady Bird. Seer Sharonin, what does she? What does she mean to you as an individual, as an Irish person in film? Well, I yeah, seeing we, it's really important that we see Irish people represented on television and media. I think it's actually major. We have Iowa Debery, we have Sir Sharonin, we have Paul Mezcal. Uh Um, yeah, Paul Mezcal. I think that man's full-time job is to wear a pair of short shorts and go for a run. Yep. I have never, ever in my life seen a single thing that Paul Mezcal is in except for a paparazzi photo of him in tiny little shorts running. The tiniest little shorts. Is he preparing? Is he training for something? Like, the way that I've... I'm not even joking. I know that he was in, what, Normal People? Yes. That's, That's the it. only thing I know him from. And then everything else is wearing those damn shorts and dating Phoebe Bridgers. Amazing career to have. Incredible. For for an Olympian. Well, what, the thing about what people would say about you, seeing you run around in your tiny little no shorts. One, but, that's, but the what thing are you is, for? I'm not doing what Paul Mezcal, his own, I don't think you understand the, the amount of photos of Paul Mezcal on runs. It is near incessant like you can't escape it and then one of our friends recently was at the gym who's in front of them running on the treadmill paul mezcal he is running from something and i would like to find out what it is maybe he's training for the new york city marathon i hope to god because it's like a hamster in a wheel it's like i hope that they get some sort of pleasure out of this at some point well think about i'm sure he's really happy joe i'm sure he's he's really so his runner's high he's our age it makes me want to die there's a lot of people that are our age that we just found out. Who else? Becky, Becky G. G. She's a year younger. That's, that Mascali. makes me sick. Becky G being 26. Like, Shower came out and I was her age. That's and what, so I was crazy. 16. Crazy. We really... Anyway. Well, how have you been feeling with our delicious array of factor meals? Honestly, I've been feeling a lot more energized. I have been enjoying my meals because I'm not just making the same thing every single day. The variety is actually what is my biggest selling point. The fact that I get a reason to live every single morning by knowing that it's going to be a different chef prepared meal that takes two minutes. I love a meal that takes two minutes. Like, I'm sorry. And it's not frozen like it's fresh it's just a whole different experience it's not messy the cleanup is easy and i'll tell you one thing i want to wash a dish the price point is fantastic i'm eating a beef like a steak meal a chick a creamy chicken dish for that price i'm not joking like when you think about how much we're paying for factor and you think about how much we pay a week in food delivery yeah we are saving 
hundreds of dollars oh, a yeah. week. Like by the end of the month, mama, that's a car. Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> and I'm trying to save for a car. And I'll say something else. You can choose six to eighteen meals a week. You're going away. We're going away for a week. I'm pausing. Pause. I'm putting it on pause. I'm going to let them know when I get back and they're going to be Factor Meals on my door. Head to factormeals.com slash goodchildren50 and use the code goodchildren50 to get 50% off. That's code goodchildren50 to factormeals.com slash goodchildren50 to get 50% off. That's kind of crazy that we're hooking you up with a 50% off Anything for our good children. I first saw Sir Sharon in a the lovely bones. Yes. We've discussed together as adults we love. before. We love, but we haunt. We are haunted by the lovely bones. Yes. I think generationally as a society, that movie did something fucked up to everyone and made us all aware that adults could kill you. Yep. And not only that, they might sexually assault you and then murder you. Yep. It was kind of the main lesson from the lovely bones. Um, I just remember watching that movie and just immediately wishing I had it. Like Cloverfield. Cloverfield. And very similarly, I don't know the name of it, but I'm just going to bring it up one more time. That, that. A ghost di- story? No, that. What's, who's the twink? Timothy Chalamet. Oh, you, you hated that movie. What was it called? Um, he was, Bones and All. Bones and All. I wish I never saw that movie and I want it out of my brain. You just, this is the problem. You blindly go into films without knowing a single thing about it. Because it could be really great. Which I love because when people are like, come see this movie with me, like I'm always the first person to be like, yeah, popcorn, but I've raisinettes. But I've seen some fucked up shit. I never forgot picking to see a ghost story. And we watched Rooney Mara eat upset. a pie for 12 minutes on screen in silence. And I just remember I you being upset. pissed. I was very upset. It when ended. You, you said, what the hell did you take me to? And I did the same. I did it. Learned my damn lesson when you took me to see the hateful eight <laughs> for 10 hours. The hateful eight in glorious 77 millimeter. Yeah. That was a crazy was it intermission an intermission and, and an overture. I was begging to God for it to be done at the intermission. Oh, yeah. And it was only just getting started, but lovely bones. I'll tell you one thing though. About Saoirse Ronan throughout the movies. Lovely Bones, Lady Bird. That's about my extent of Saoirse, which okay. I know her, rep- her, you know, repertoire is beyond. Mm-hmm. Incredible actress. Well, yes. Incredible. And I think that she's rightfully credited for that in Incredible. her career. So good for Ireland. Good for Ireland. To bring it back to her, her filmography for a second. So you got the Lovely Bones. Then, I mean, of course, she did, like, Hannah or something, and then there was movies in between these as well, but I think the next time Saoirse really popped onto the map for me, probably, she was in The Host. You know The Host? I do know The Host, actually. Do you have experiences with The Host? I think I've watched The Host. Is that the end of the experience? Yeah, I don't really remember too much about The Host. Is it the one that I'm thinking of? No. No. What's that movie on Netflix? I think it's also called The Host, yeah. but it's not the same host. Yeah, no, I didn't see The Host. The, the Host is host. like a Stephanie Meyer movie, I want to say. Like the woman who wrote Twilight. It's like a book. It's like with the aliens with the eye chip or something. Stephanie Meyer missed me. You didn't read Twilight? Didn't read, but watched. That's enough, Yeah, I think. But I want. But the thing is, it's like, I feel like for Stephanie's stay, sake, I should have read her work. It's never too late to read Twilight. I haven't read it either, to be completely transparent with you. I would not. I'm not even kidding. I would do a Twilight book club with you. I'd okay. be weekly about it. We will never do that. And that's something that we have to fucking accept, is we have big plans sometimes to read books, and we will never do that. Point blank, period. Okay. I, that, that was like the first time in my life that I was okay with accepting that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just right. the truth. It it's is just the truth. The truth. Why, set, why set ourselves up for failure? That's going to disappoint why us. Why pretend to read? You're right. Okay. Why pretend to read? Because I would be sick. I, like, thinking about, like, if we had a date on the books to, like, talk about Twilight, like, I would be sick about it. It'd be fun, though, because then we could watch the movie. When That's we what I'm it. saying. Is it for just us, me and you? Is it just for us, or are we, like, inviting our listeners to also take part in our Twilight Book Club? Maybe we'll do that on Patreon. Okay. We'll announce the Twilight Book Club on Patreon. Um, Back to her filmography. Sorry, yeah. Back to the filmography of Sarah Sharonin. I want to say something happened after The Lovely Bones that made me fall deeper in Brooklyn. 
Brooklyn. You saw Brooklyn. I saw Brooklyn. Yeah, I know. It you was did. Am- it was incredible. I mean, yes. like talk about an talk about amazing love story. Ireland and Brooklyn, two of our favorite places. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Ireland and Brooklyn: the Italian Irish. Well, that's well, that's the whole thing. That's the whole point. Well, it's what do you mean by that? Well, because I I would say, I mean, my ancestors, my Italian grandmother, my Irish grandfather got together and at the time there was different times controversial at the time very controversial my great grandfather italian didn't like the irish right why would you want to be together what do you have in common wow. he's a drinker you make sauce now look at me i make vodka sauce so i combine my cultures some could say because there's potatoes in vodka tell you one thing wish i brought up my bagpipes for this episode we yeah let's one for one second i just want to know how that happened i want to know how bagpiping became something you were doing at 16 years old so i think for me like i always love a challenge yeah and i also loved an opportunity to stand out i think it was pitched to me by my father that if I was to get some of my friends to join bagpipes with me, he'd bring me to Carvel every Wednesday for buy one, get one free on some days. Um, so obviously at the time, I'm like, yeah, I want a hot buddy Sunday. So I'll... Join? Yes, I did, Joe. Ray. John Paul and Ray. John Paul was doing the bagpipes? John Paul was playing bagpipes with me at the very beginning because you didn't want in. You asked me? Yes, Joe. I 100% asked you, and you were probably like, are you kidding me, you nuts? Why would I play the bagpipes? I think I had to I play. I kind of think it would be amazing, though, if we both played the bagpipes I wish. at this no, point. Like, if, I, if I had the fucking wherewithal to know that 20, <laughs> like, 20 years later, now yeah. that we're 36 years old, yeah. um, 10 years later, like, we'd have a podcast based on those years, I would have been like, I'll do every weird fucking thing you ask Coming me Coming out do. in the sluttiest little kilts on stage so playing the bagpipes. Is very hot. They're very hot. That also kind of was a driving, motivating factor. You were like, I get to, I get to be femme. I get to wear a skirt. But I'll tell you, it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. People look at bagpipers and you think you might either love that sound or you might, either, you might hate that sound. I think 98% of people hate, hate the that sound. Because it's a lot of times attributed to funerals, too. It's just a sad weren't, sound. Weren't you playing at funerals? I played at one funeral. I could barely, I could barely get through a tragic movie without crying, right? Me at a funeral playing Amazing Grace. I just in a can't suit? believe what you in your life have said yes to. No. Did I tell you about the wedding that was on St. Patrick's Day that my parents took that I went to for my cousin? Did I tell you this? Let me tell you this really quick and then I'm gonna leave it there because it was on St. Patrick's Day. You don't have to leave it there. I'm actually completely enthralled. So I was at my cover. My my cover. Your cover. I, you guys, I'm really losing you're my covering. speech. I'm covering. covering. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if you're my cousin, you're you're literally covering. So I was at my cousin Sammy's wedding on St. Patrick's Day. At this point, I'm about one and a half years into playing the bagpipes. I have no intention <laughs> of playing the bagpipes at this wedding. Please let me Don't say that one more time. Say it. I Don't had no intention s- of playing the bagpipes at this wedding. Don't even say that your dad did this. Joe. Joe. I'm sitting in the church. No. I'm sitting in the church watching my cousin be wed. <laughs> my dad turns to me and goes, The bagpipes are in the trunk. <laughs> I go, okay, the bagpipes are in the trunk, sure. He was like, wouldn't it be really nice if you were to play the bagpipes for your cousin's wedding? I'm like, are you kidding me? I am not playing the bagpipes for my cousin's wedding. Lo and behold, 15 minutes later, 15 minutes later, I walk out of the church. I get the bagpipes from the trunk. Everyone's leaving the church. And, and I'm playing the two songs that I knew on Baby my Baby by int- Justin Bieber? <laughs> yes. Baby by Justin Bieber is one of them. No. It's, it was Minstrel Boy 
And what was that song title? Minstrel Boy. Minstrel Boy? That's what it was called. Jesus. I was playing Amazing Grace. First of all, Amazing Grace, let's leave it for a, a funeral. I'm playing if now. I, again, did, I, mean, I want to know. So, if, I want to know if Susie, Sammy, Sammy. I want to know if Sammy knew this was. Gonna she had to have known. It had to have been. If planned. I were fucking Sammy, and I was getting married, and I walk out of the church, and there is little cousin and little cousin Andrew yes. Muscarella, yes, playing Amazing Grace yes. on the bagpipes unbeknownst to me i would have you taken out on spot yeah no i would take my can you imagine you're leaving your wedding and you go do i hear bagpipes it's also like my cousins are like watching me huddled in the corner everyone's like whoa i'm like turning beet red mind you i'm 18 months into learning how to play the bagpipes. (laughs) it's not an easy instrument to just like play and now i'm playing publicly in front of about 300 people that i was not expecting to my body is going into shock (laughs) i actually can't even see straight i was i couldn't even believe what was happening but i I had to do it like did you ever put your foot down like in your life (sighs) i feel like mm, no i maybe maybe once but like this was this was with good intention, you know what I mean? And but like, still, I understand I that. No, and I I know your dad. I know your dad. It's full good intention. But I think if that were me, and I was a teenager at that point, and my dad said the bagpipes were in the trunk, I would be like, Dad, the bagpipes are staying there. I am not playing the bagpipes. But I have like a crippling fear of letting people down. <laughs> Like, it's, like, my biggest fear is letting people down. And, like, if they were already in the trunk, like, I I tried to say, no, I'm not doing that. And then it was kind of, like, then I just felt the guilt. And I was, out of all places, in a cathedral. Could you even believe what God was thinking? I can't even believe No, I can't even believe what he was thinking. Or imagine God was was not involved in this decision. And I'll tell you the next thing that happened. Andrew, what's going on? The owner of the bar across the street comes up to me and says, were you the person just playing the bad pipes? And I'm like, (gasps) my lips, like my lips literally have no more like feeling in them because it's, it's that insane. I'm like, yeah. He was like, would you be, would you be free for two hours to play? I pay you 600 bucks. How to say no? How to go to the wedding? <laughs> you would have said yes at that point. I, Joe, I was I was in tenth grade, eleventh grade for six hundred bucks. But you almost died doing one song. But at that point, I was already there. Yeah, you looped up. You but, looped up at the church. So that was my that was my wedding experience for St. Patrick's Day. Wow, I understand. And you know what? I'm sure Sammy actually wanted the bagpipes. It was St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, I understand. And imagine hiring a bagpiper on St. Patrick's Day for a wedding. The rates, impossible. impossible. So then your dad, Sammy's, someone mentioned to your dad, they wish they could have gotten a bagpiper, but whatever. My dad said, I know a guy. You know what? Let me, Andrew will do it with, he'll be glad to do it. Yeah. Doesn't tell you because he knows if he told you, you'd be shitting and throwing up, throwing up on everyone in the car there. It was actually really smart on his behalf. It was master manipulation on his on his part. Because he knows I have scripting performance. So he's like, you know what? Let me wait until he's in a church pew. And say, bagpipes are in the trunk. Bagpipes are in the trunk is so scary. Yeah. So. Wow. I, I would say I've celebrated. Say I would Patrick's say you've day. celebrated as well. Um, yeah. So then Saoirse Ronan, the the next part of my story about her is I don't know what happened in, again, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. but there was something, there was a reason I stand her. I don't know why. Um, but then she was in jawline. the crucible, her jawline. Yeah. You're not necessarily wrong. That's why you stand her. She was in the crucible on Broadway. And if you know me, you know, I have a thing for the crucible. I always have since I was a child. And Sarah Sharonin and Tavi Gevinson, two queens at the top of their game, were both in the Crucible on Broadway. Mm-hmm. And I stand both of those girls for different reasons at that time. Who was Saoirse playing? She was Abigail. Oh. Sarah Sharonin as Abigail Williams, and I'm in the audience. Come on. Come on. But here's the thing. And I was just reminded of this story last week. And SWS, Sarah, if you're listening, I'm sorry. 
but sucking whip. <laughs> Um, I really didn't want to even say sucking because I really think it's the most rude thing we've ever done on this podcast. <laughs> that people are calling her, her sucking, sucking with Sarah. Sarah. Sucking Sarah. Sucking Sarah is so <laughs> She nasty. should start a podcast called Sucking, sucking with Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um, Sarah was like, Sarah was not known as a sucker. I just want to make it clear. No. Um, but <laughs> me and Sarah and our friend Frank were going to see The Crucible on Broadway. You know me and I'm I'm still paying the price of the royal episode of revealing like my darkest teenage obsession with the celebrity. I'm still being called a narcissistic sociopath every day on Instagram, real comments. But obviously I want to meet Sir Sharon and I want a stage door. Yep. Like that's part of the thing is I was obsessed with these people at that time. Um I'm in, I'm there. I went to Schmackeries early. I got my Schmackeries. <sighs> so good. And we're right next to the theater and, and Showtime's in about an hour. Don't even say this to me. Showtime's in about an hour. So that's about the time that the actors are going to start showing up in the next 15 minutes. I'm kind of just lingering because what if? What if? So I'm just, I'm there. Sarah says, I could really use a soft pretzel. No. I never want to turn down a soft pretzel when that's brought up. So I had to go down the street and go to the pretzel stand. You left the theater to get a soft pretzel? Well, I left outside of SWS? Yeah, for SWS. And... We get back. No change. No worries. Don't worry about it. There's a girl who walks past, shaking, crying, going, I cannot believe we just met Sir Ronan. My stomach just dropped. In between the pretzel, in between the pretzel, Saoirse entered Jump. the theater. And listen, would it have changed my life? Absolutely not. And in fact, I really wouldn't even have a story to tell. I would just say I met Sarah Sharon and probably said something weird and embarrassed myself. So at the end of the day, the pretzel was kind of worth it. I I, I have think. I have chills thinking about the fact that, that because, misconnection. Of, because of a street pretzel yeah. in the middle of New York City's Midtown. Yeah. You missed Transfer. you missed one of your icons who you were dressed up as today. And I'll say the resemblance is uncanny. It's it's uncanny. It's just you have very similar features over here. There's not one similarity between me and Sersha Ronan. Although I love this hair on me. Your this hair on you looks very good. Like I like this little like I honestly would do this exact haircut and color. I think that you should get your hair. I think you should just go wig. You, you can grow it out, but you hate the grow. So grow it underneath. You want me to start walking around tomorrow in this wig? Why not, Joe? Why I've, done, not? I've worn Stranger Things. You've worn much Stranger Things on the street. People are going to see you and be like, is that Joe Hedges? Is that Joe Hedges in a Ladybird wig? And you're like, yeah, yeah. it is. Um, wow. That's pretty much my limit to the Sir should talk, except then obviously Ladybird came out. And I'm dressed like her for that reason. There's not much more to say. I've got a 17-year-old in their senior year of high school at a Catholic school who wants to move to New York City and become a different person and changes their name, tries to make everyone call them a different name. Um, Didn't your mother not like that you liked that movie, or did she like that movie with you? Oh, I made mom watch it, and she learned all the wrong lessons from it. She was like, oh my god, I'm just like Lady Bird's mom. And I was like, yeah. I don't want to deal with what if might have. What is your favorite St. Patrick's Day food? I got to say corned beef and cabbage. You can't really go wrong. You can't really go wrong. And I wish you liked cabbage. I wish I liked cabbage too. And I think that if my mom was listening, she's going to be upset that I don't like her cabbage. Because I feel like you were turning your nose up because I know you. I know you pretty well. And I think that you don't, I think you're avoiding an experience that you might love because you have a predisposition to what you might think it would be. It's stinky. I don't like nothing that's stinky. I know. We'll never forget what you tuna. Did to we'll never forget what you did. To Second well, grade cafeteria. He has egg salad. You make him cry. You made him sob over the egg salad. I'm never gonna let this down. And because like, I don't know. Like, I every felt no it happened. Like, I felt responsible for for everyone in that situation. Like, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna apologize to. Because I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if you have a stinky ass sandwich, I'm going to call you out on your bullshit. Like, I'm so sorry. But like I just think that's... It wasn't a, my place at the time. Such 
a slippery slope it's because very there are slippery. so many meals from so many cultures and nationalities that may not smell the way you're like American Eurocentric Irish ass Italian ass food smells well not everyone the- had a, a crippling gag reflex that they couldn't walk into a Starbucks so I'm sure me smelling the egg salad was probably starting something and stirring something for my gas pockets that already existed So, so my favorite St. Patrick's Day meal. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> You're choking on the hair. Does that happen? Yeah, people choke on hair. Like, if you have hair, this like, does it sometimes just fly into your mouth like that? I think if you're like, well, I asked Sarah, because I feel like if you're sucking a lot <laughs> Shut the fuck sorry, up. Sorry, I'm so Shut sorry. It like sucks. It sucks that we like created a character for her. I know it really does suck. <laughs> Damn. I think that everyone forgives you for the egg salad. Okay, and, and I, I'm sorry that I keep bringing it up. No, and it's I'm okay. I'm sorry and, that I laughed at it, and I'm sorry that I told everyone. And, and I'm, I'm sorry s- that I'm telling everyone again right now. And I, and I appreciate that, and I accept you, uh, your apology. And I do think that, like, in the heat of the moment, like I said, I was never going to apologize. And I do apologize. I think that it was wrong I think of you me. You apologized that... the last time. What? I think you apologized the last time. I know. I'm time. like, I constantly feel like I'm apologizing for egg salad. And it just like, if that's the thing that I have to keep apologizing for, I'll take it. I, I like egg salad. Well, then why did you have to say that to me? Because, like, when you have an egg salad sandwich that's sitting in tinfoil for about three hours before you crack <laughs> that bad boy open, it's going to stink up a room. It's going to stink up a room. <laughs> but it was a cafeteria. It wasn't like we were in a tiny But class. when you're directly across from somebody or next to them, like, <laughs> sorry. So- but the thing is, I don't think the thing that made me upset was you. What made me upset in was that like situation. was like how it was him. How deeply he was affected. How instantly he was affected. He burst into tears within seconds. He broke down. Because he was fragile. He knew. He, he was knew. a very fragile kid. It's like you you were the straw that broke his back that day. And you know he went home and said, Mom, I'm Mom. never taking egg salad to school again. Andrew Muscarella said it smelled bad. Oh my god. And she said, Andrew Muscarella oh said god. it smelled bad. <laughs> Have you taken a, s- a whiff of him? <laughs> oh. Have you ever picked a four-leaf clover? Be honest. No. But... I spent many a soccer game, many a baseball game, many a football game staring at the ground for a four-leaf clover. And I'm not talking as a spectator. As a player in the games, I was spending my field time eyes to the ground. Yeah, of course. Hoping to God to find a four-leaf clover. Because and you I just want to kind of remember of someone that. at some point, maybe my father, maybe even your father, both of them were our coaches. Someone saying, what are you doing? Look up. Like, you got to look up. It's the game, Joe. And I was like, no, the game is actually below our feet because I need to find a four-leaf clover. Did you, ever, you never found. I never you found, never despite found all of my effort. Because they're fake. They're not fake. There's just not a lot of luck. You don't, you don't believe in magic? I do believe in magic, but, like, when it comes to a four-leaf clover, I kind of feel like that's just, like, a mutation. Well, yes. But it's not, like, luck. It's pretty rare to find one, and is luck not rare? Ask Selena Gomez. What song? Rare. (laughs) Do you want to hear my Selena Gomez impression that I've been working on? Yeah, please. Ask me a question. So, Selena... How are you doing? That's a great question. And I honestly have to say I'm feeling really good right now. And I'm really glad to be here. I'm really happy that you're here. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Good good children children to the the guidance guidance office. Hi, my name is Beth. I just, um, I started my own podcast. You guys were like literally my inspiration. It's called The Buzz of Death, and I really enjoy it. I'm having it the most fun. I'm literally following my dream. I've always wanted to do it since I was 14. I'm 18, by the way. And I'm, like, starting to do it. And I've been trying to do some advertising and stuff, like, do social media stuff. I mean, I'm only 18, of course. I'm not that good at it. But I have been getting so much hate 
it's it's crazy. I actually I even had to delete my Snapchat Snapchat account um because I was getting so much hate. And I just wanted to ask, how do you guys deal with getting hate, especially like with your podcast? Because honestly, I'm having a really hard time with it. Um, I don't want to stop, but I I just want to know how to handle it. Um, thank you. Have a nice day, and I love you guys so much. Bath. What's your name? I I can't hear. I think it's Bath. Beth. So or today Bev. it's gonna be Beth. It's or Beth, Bev. no matter what, right now. And what was the podcast called? I think I also couldn't tell. I tried to listen to this actually a few times. Buzz with Beth. Buzz with Beth is right now what we've named it. Okay. Well, I hope it is. I also hope. And if you're listening, you should stream. That was that would have hit me hard. Beth, that's so you're so sweet. You're so sweet, and all. you're 18 years old. You're so young. I am jealous. That, well, I'm not necessarily jealous that you're starting that early, but that you came to four years after you had the thought that you wanted to do something or put yourself out there, that you're actually doing it, is the first step that's like, once you take that step, oh, you it's took massive. that step. It's major. But you're always going to experience the hate. haters and the losers out there. But you can't let the hate out, outweigh the the. I imagine it's extremely challenging when you're 10 years younger than us also yeah. to do that. Um, but it does, it's... It's very challenging as a 27-year-old yeah. a lot of the times. Um, I will wake up with, like, the nastiest thing you've ever heard in your entire life in my DMs three times a week. Yeah. From a complete stranger who has a public-facing Instagram account. Like, a normal person frequently. And it's insane. Like, it's genuinely, it's an insane feeling. But at the same time... You have to think, like, if I had a friend who was sending someone a hate message, if you're, listen, if you're saying something offensive to a group of people, if you're doing something that is upsetting people with intention, with malice behind what you're saying, and people are calling you out on it, that's one thing. But if someone's just, like, hating the fuck on, like, hating the fuck out of you for no reason... That person's literally out of their fucking minds. Like, I need you to imagine. Can you imagine if you found out, Andrew, that I had been DMing, like, a creator? Can you imagine I have been DMing someone, you're a piece of shit, like, you're pathetic, whatever. Is that what you're getting? Oh, my God. You have no idea what I'm getting. All the time. People are messaging you, you're a pathetic piece of shit. Pathetic, try hard, like, cringe. And it always is, I love Andrew. It always ends with that. Andrew's amazing. I fucking hate you. Oh, which Joe, is I'm so sorry. crazy. I mean, here's the thing. It does fuck me up sometimes. But then I'm like, you people are fucking crazy. I'm like, this is crazy <laughs> behavior. I'm like, but it's just like it when it when it bugs you, it bugs you. But when you realize that like someone has taken even 10 seconds yeah. out of their day yeah. to <laughs> message you something hateful, like they're so doing? jealous of you. What are you doing with your life? Like the, the hate's you coming imagine? from somewhere, though. Because because you can't, like if I had a single friend that was hating on someone on the internet, and I, it got back to me, I'd be like that person is fucking nuts. If I was yeah. dating someone and my partner was like sending hate, I'd be like, you're out of your like. We can't date. Like if it, like there's no world where a normal rational person show me these accounts i'll block oh i honestly should be sending you should it's but it's just like you have to realize that like these people are genuinely unwell like especially when you're 18 years old like you do need to protect yourself you need to make sure more than anything because you have plenty of time to pursue your dreams if you don't feel like right now is a safe time for you to put yourself on the internet Take a second because you have a lot of yeah. time, Beth. You have a lot Beth. of time. And realize, like, a podcast is a big undertaking, right? Like, you, there are a lot of trade offs, yeah. right? When you're putting yourself out there constantly on the internet, when people know things about you, what you were wearing that day, what you were saying, what you were whatever. Like, there are a lot of positive and could be framed as negative trade offs that you're going to experience. By constantly putting yourself out there, especially when you're 18 years old. So, like, you know that. You started. Don't stop. But I'm saying. Protect yourself. Yeah, protect yourself. Because I'm almost a 30-year-old man. And there are days when I get when I see just one random message or comment where I'm like, 
there goes the day. Yeah. I'm going to think about this for the rest of the day. Yeah. But a switch flipped recently where I was like, like, I really started laughing. I was like, this is actually the craziest behavior. So if you can think about it that way, like if you like these people will seek out to target your deepest insecurities. Mm-hmm. And if you have a podcast, if your goal is to be vulnerable, you will reveal those insecurities every single week in earnest to hopefully help someone else who's dealing with those things. Yeah. But people will find those things, use those against you, and try to ruin your life in a result of that. And the best response you can have is just simply to LOL. I mean, like, what yeah. else can you possibly do? Like, you're being a psycho bitch. You're being a psycho bitch. And I'm making money. Yeah. So who's winning? You are. You know what I mean? But that, that, I can't believe I got one that, recently Joe. that said, and this one cracked that. me up. It said, like, Andrew is perfect and should never change. I can't. This Joe, <laughs> I wish I could remember It was a it. DM to you a directly? D- this was a DM to good children. Okay. Joe is, who even knows the first part of it? It was something insulting. But then it goes, also, people who have big dicks don't talk about their big dicks with a smiley face. And I was like, I actually think... The only person who's talked about my dick on this podcast is Andrew. Yeah. And listen, Joe's got a big dick. So I'm going to say that out loud. And then there's also this element where it's like, these people will say that as if we don't have a personal friendship and relationship where it's like, if you like Andrew, how do you think, how, like, how do you think that Andrew and I don't interface ever? Like, what? Do you think there's a similarity or commonality here? Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, that's horrible. So, Beth, it gets worse. Oh, no. But you can get better. But you can get better and surround yourself with people who support you. It also, that's also an amazing side of it. It's like you see something crazy, put that phone down. Oh, my other point to Beth. Sorry, I could talk about this for hours. Jeez Louise. You're 18. You were really raised on the internet. And that's a blessing and a curse. We luckily had, we, like, Beth does not, was not alive in a time where you logged off. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, we ha- we were just there. Like, we would log out of AIM. We would log yeah. off of Facebook. We would log into Instagram. Like, it wasn't 24-7 online. Yeah. When you realize that logging off is an option, and you remember Easy. that, like, trees exist yeah. like there's like the, the dogs are going for walks like if you look around you and look outside and like touch real life none of it matters you're like these yeah. this is not real i have friends i have family i have things i like i have like qualities about myself i enjoy that are not being turned into assets for social media like you need to remember that the internet is simply a way to experience the greater experience of yeah. living. Correct. Especially at 18. I'm, I feel really sorry for teenagers. I know. Even more than ever. Like, it's just crazy. The pressures. It's hard. I a can't. 20, you're living in virtual reality. I'm a 27-year-old who barely can post to the internet. Like, you, like, that's your whole all you know. Like, that's what they do. And that's how they, that's how they expect to, to, like, make a life for yeah. themselves. Yeah. Which you very well can easily do. Not easily, but like you very well could do and it can happen overnight and you overnight. it's just crazy. Yeah. No, stop. I'm gonna freak out. It's St. Patrick's Day. Day. We are about to slay. Everybody's no one having fun today. <laughs> Everybody's getting drunk. Mm. Everyone's Everyone's eating eating corned beef and cabbage. cabbage. They're trying it with an open Open mind mind. and an open mouth. And an open hole. It will open up your hole is the thing. And maybe you kind of should avoid it for that reason. But yeah, I kind of need something that does You're like closer. You're craving I'm craving a closing. You need some bloggers. (laughs) (laughs) Good Good children children to the the cafeteria. cafeteria. We're making a shamrock shake you can make at home with your friends and spend zero dollars to corporations on. There you go. So I'm just gonna wing what I think the shamrock shake is gonna be. And I'll tell you one thing. That looks about right. One scoop, two scoops, three scoops. That's for one serving. Oh, so it's six. 
four scoops, five scoops, and I'm telling you one thing, six scoops, just a little extra. I'm telling you one thing, I'm using Edie's because they've been scooping since 1928. And they started scooping a year before the Great Depression. Yeah. Heavy cream. Heavy cream was a choice. Heavy cream seems right. Okay. I'm going to do half a cup of heavy cream. I'm going to start hysterically sobbing. We have peppermint extract. Teaspoon. Now, this is where you can decide how many spews of green you want. But I think... Don't go crazy. We're going to go 12. Oh, I remember actually my parents, I think that for, um, when we used to watch the Kids' Choice Awards, uh -huh. they were they were DIYing a chamois. Yeah, of course. I feel like that's the thing to do. Because it was do. slime. All right, you read? No one quite does it like Ninja. And we're gonna open the maraschinos. I mean, is that not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your entire life? That was it's definitely thick. I only got to work on my own. Yeah, I would make some edits. The perfect recipe is five scoops of ice cream. Per person? Per person. About half a cup of heavy cream. <laughs> half a teaspoon of peppermint extract and uh, about 10 to 12 squirts of green food coloring. How do you feel about the word maraschine? If you want the full length version of this, come to Patreon. <sighs> Dress as Lady Bird. Now I look like I would hate crime someone, so. Where are we? Um, also prepare some meatball subs. I vlog my supermarket experience. Do I get go half the fat? Do I go half the fuck that? I'm going full fat. I'm going full fat for this. And we plan our LA trip with you. We just officially scheduled our interview with the one and only world famous. Back to the studio. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Very good, but I, I feel just, sick. I can't keep living like this. No, we keep saying this. It, the, it, the end is near. We need a nutritionist to live in the apartment. Yeah. And to smack the and if we have a And if we have a listener who is a nutritionist, who would, I know we have a, a, actually a lot, a few. Yeah. Ask yourself one, this one question. Would you live with us? Well, that was a magical episode. It was definitely an episode that took you to a few places. And I hope this St. Patrick's Day, you find your lucky charm. Yeah, I hope you have a safe, happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope that if you're not going to a bar, you're watching Brooklyn starring Sarah Sharonin. And I hope you continue slaying the day away. And I hope that Beth continues Buzz with Beth. I would hope, I think everyone hopes. Yeah. With that being said, you know what to do. Don't forget to like, comment, Patron subscribe. Patron of the week, Bridget Mack. Just felt like it. I mean, like, I kind of feel like, yeah. There's a, f okay. Bridget Mack. Bridget Mack is this week, for sure. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, rate, review. Write a little something. I can't believe we're at 18,000 reviews, and we're currently not. So, like, please, please, please review. We get the background scoop now. We get the inside scoop. Millions of people are watching this podcast. We're kind of, no. Weekly. <laughs> Weekly. So it's kind of getting freaky. But um, don't forget to do your homework and send it to your friends. You know where to find us. Yeah. Don't forget to follow us across all social media platforms at Good Children Pod. There's just sometimes content you can't miss on Instagram at the yeah. very least, I would say. I mean, some things that we talk about. If you're not a viewer of the podcast, you're seeing all those little references we're talking yes. about on Instagram. Um, I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges. Feel free to send me a nice DM, please. Jesus. I was gonna go the opposite rate, right, but I feel like it would just actually incite more terror. I'm so. about to I'm about to start an initiative. <laughs> a campaign. The is my foundation. <laughs> <laughs> um and on TikTok at be quiet Joe. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella. Um please DM me and you can DM me hate at this point. And TikTok at Andrew underscore Muskie. 
I can't get over this. I'm going to send you a nice message each morning. Thank you. See you next week. See you next week. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rain fall soft upon your seat. May God hold you in the palm of his hands. We sang that second grade chorus when Mr. Farina retired, Principal Farina. That was a bizarre song suggestion for him. I think he was Irish. That makes sense.